This presentation is on the annual performance evaluation process here at Lawson State. As you can see, I'm on the home page of the website. And the first thing I want you to do is to go to Human Resources. That's where all the information about the annual performance evaluation is, is conducted or held. And as you can see, right in this area, you're going to go ahead and click on the annual performance evaluation. And I really like this page because not only does it explain the process to you, it also provides you with all of the instruments that we use here at the institution, whether they're faculty evaluations, staff evaluations, or administrative evaluation instruments. Okay, And we'll go over those in a few minutes. In in a nutshell, the annual performance evaluation process is conducted annually, um, once a year, for all full-time, part-time faculty and staff, as well as all administration at the institution. The Human Resources Department conducts, or rather manages, this process. That means that they are the ones who send out the initial emails regarding it, and they also ensure that the evaluations are, in fact, completed tracked and done and submitted to their office for personnel filing. So it's extremely important. The evaluation process, of course, is important. One thing I will also tell you is that the evaluation process here at Lawson State is designed not so not it's not a punitive document. It is designed to really um, focus on your strengths and weaknesses as an employee here, to identify those weaknesses if there are any, and to help you to improve in those areas. It's also designed to celebrate all the great things that all of you are doing. So that's the way it's set up. Let's talk about the signing of your evaluation document. A lot of times people might think that, oh, I'm not going to sign it if I disagree. Well, in Lawson, that is not how the evaluation process is set up. In fact, it's designed so that you're not signing to agree or disagree, although that's part of it. You're actually signing to say, hey, yes, in fact, my evaluation took place. And in that, you can check off whether you agree with the evaluation or disagree. So we actually allow you to say, yes, I disagree, or yes, I agree. It is very rare that someone would disagree with their evaluation. However, if that ever does happen, you're actually able to put in what we call an evaluation rebuttal, meaning that you can actually challenge your evalu evaluation or the facts that lie within that evaluation. Now, this rebuttal should not be based on emotion, but rather you would actually have to go down the document and let's say that you scored very low on something, you can provide evidence as to why you feel it should have been ranked higher. So it just gives you a voice, but the evaluation does stand. Okay, next, evaluation and observation instruments. Let's take a look here. As I said earlier, we have them separated, and I've already pulled a few up, but basically what you would do is just simply click on the um, link and the document will populate. Right now we have Word documents out here, but probably within the next six months we'll be changing these likely to PDF documents if we decide to go that route. In any case, you'll need either Word, Microsoft Word, or Adobe Professional to look at these documents. So I'm going to go just for do it a little faster here. Let's take a look at uh, one of the instruments. This one happens to be an instructor evaluation. We'll also look at a staff one. But one of the things that you need to understand is that no matter what instrument you're looking at, they're all set up the same. They may have different categories. Some may be longer than others, but they're all essentially set up the same. We have five levels of, of how you're evaluated on a particular item or category. And level one is unsatisfactory, meaning the employee is not meeting his or her job expectations. But notice that before someone can rank you at a level one, they have to attach documentation. It can't just be some type of subjective um, commentary or, 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 or position. The supervisor must attach some type of documentation as to why you or anyone is not satisfactory, unsatisfactory. If it's needing improvement, which is a different ranking altogether, then that's a ranking of two, no documentation is needed, satisfactory, no documentation is needed there, and above average. But notice exceptional, five, the same requirement. Then the supervisor must attach required documentation. We have both of these requirements in place. We've developed this form over several years, um, but we have these in place to avoid overinflated evaluations and very punitive evaluations. So we looked at it on both spectrums. 
I will also say that this document um, has been developed with the input of both faculty, staff, and administration, as I said, over the years. So you can see that each instrument, you have different categories, how one is evaluated. And this, like I said, this is a faculty one. Notice with the faculty evaluation, student results are embedded in here. After you finish, after your supervisor finishes, you know, ranking you on each item, what they're going to do is tabulate. And again, every document is set up the same way. They're going to count all your ones, all your twos, hopefully you don't have many of those, all your threes and your fours, and maybe the occasional five. And they're going to add up all of these from these remaining pages, as you see. And they'll come here and they'll give you your tallies, which are right here. Then they'll ask questions. The form will ask, does the employee have more than a certain number of ones? And again, every form is different. But this form gives you the employee up to 10 um, ones or twos or the combination of, of the two. If they do have at least, notice this, is that number at eight or more, right? If the, if the employee has more than eight, then they actually will be on an improvement plan. So you can see that it would take quite a lot of ones and twos to actually move you um, up to that particular ranking in terms of needs improvement. So I'm going to go down here. Once the ranking is um, maintained, or we look at the ranking up here, and you don't have a lot of ones and twos, then the highest number, so that means if you had more threes or more fours, then what would happen is that the, the supervisor would come here, and whatever the largest number is, that would be your ranking. So again, if you had more fours, you'd be ranked at a four. If you had more threes, you'd be ranked at a three. Okay. Again, the gray area is only when you have a certain amount of unsatisfactories or needs improvement. Again, very rare. This is also checking to see if you have your professional development points. All employees who are full-time are required to have 100 points, and you should have learned this in your training. Um, CTEL can provide you additional training through lynda.com if you need additional points. So you can always go to, to lynda.com to assist you in that regard. And that's it. We can also, if you notice on the last page here, we're talking about you list your upcoming professional development goals. When you're sitting there with your supervisor, you're talking about what you plan to do for next year. The supervisor can put additional comments here, and so can you, but these are optional areas. And then at the very end of, your doc, of the document, that's when we talked about this earlier in the training today, where you actually agree or disagree with the evaluation. So that is the instructor evaluation. Here is a part-time staff evaluation. Again, the only difference between the support staff evaluation for part-time and full-time is the length. So I just want to do this one for the sake of time. You can see the same type of setup. They're being ranked on particular categories. This one's just a shorter version. You tally those rankings. Here they can't have more than five. You see that? No more than five ones or twos. The same here, the majority of where those tallies fall will give a satisfactory above average ranking. And then you'll see at the very bottom the same statement in terms of agree or disagree. So that's what I meant by no matter who you're evaluating or whatever form you're looking at, the setup is designed to be the same. So that hopefully addresses some of your general questions about the annual performance and evaluation process here at Lawson State. If you have any additional questions, please speak to your supervisor as well as, of course, our wonderful, wonderful staff in the Human Resources Office. Thank you.